Interesting thing happened to myself and Mary yesterday. We, um, we actually printed out these uh, documents that were going to be handed, handed out for both the yesterday's session and today's session. And we went down to a local office works and, uh, and we got them all printed, right? Both uh, the documents for yesterday and the documents for today. And uh, Mary said the two separate documents. But the interesting feeling that Mary had when she was up at the counter was that there was a group of spirits there who thought the whole lot was rubbish and they didn't want anything to do with it, right? Which was interesting because as a result of that, we finished up getting all the copies for, the stuff for one day done, but the second day they didn't copy. And so we go through all the copies and we finished up getting twice the amount of copies of one day and no copies for today. And I know that it was to do with these uh, spirits and the feelings that they, that they had towards us. So in future what we have to remember is when we feel that feeling coming from those spirits, we have to check what's being done. <laughs> the, the subsequent result is that uh, today there are no sheets to hand out to you. <laughs> um, and, and unfortunately, um, I had these are four pages this time of, of stuff so, uh, that I had to hand out. So what I'm going to have to do is email them to everyone. So I'll do that over the coming day or so, just email out to everyone the first three mediumship sessions. So that way, any of you who have added yourself to the email list and have missed the first few sessions, um, we can, uh, you can get those and start working through some of those lessons. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about a little before we began is that uh, we, the mediumship sessions are not specifically to do with mediumship in the sense that we're not going to be doing much mediumship in the sessions themselves. The goal here is to actually help your soul develop so that you can become a clear medium. So the information that I'm giving you, if you put it into practice, you'll become a clear medium quite rapidly over the coming year. If you don't put the information into practice, obviously you won't become a clear medium in that time. You might need longer. Um, but there are some interesting things I would like to start doing with some of you who feel comfortable or confident in doing that. Now, one of those things is yesterday, I don't know if you noticed that the spirit in the auditorium yesterday was quite confused. Did, how many of you actually felt that? Like, yeah, so quite of you felt that. So, so um, do you know the reason why, if you ask your spirit guide right now what the reason why is, what reason comes to you as to why there was a sort of like a mixed feeling yesterday in the presentation? Does anyone want to use the mic and just maybe comment about what their feelings were that they've got from their guide? Maybe Monica, would you like to? Just in front of you. What came through, and it's certainly what I'm processing at the moment, is uh, a doubt as to uh, what they're hearing is the truth or not. So some confusion or anger about whether they're hearing the truth or not. Yep, very much so. Um, yesterday there is, was in fact a, a large group of spirits here who felt very, very angry and upset with me. And the reason why is they, uh, there were a large group of Christian spirits here who, who, were, who were basically saying, if you're saying you're Jesus, then why aren't, and I believed in Jesus when I was on earth, why am I sitting here in one of the hills and why hasn't your death saved me? Right? So there was a lot of anger coming from that group of spirits. There was also a lot of anger coming from another group of spirits who feel that any, uh, there was, the audience yesterday was quite bright in appearance. Many of you have received divine love now and so your brightness as a group of people is, is growing. And what that means is that from a spirit's perspective, spirits often roam all over the earth looking for locations where people are brighter. Does that make sense? Because they feel that that might be the source of truth for them. So what they do is they hover over the earth, if you like, looking for bright locations and they find a bright location then they zone in on it. And then when they zone in on it, one of the first emotions that come up for them is a, a, an emotion of jealousy. Well, you imagine, if you've been sitting in the spirit world for some years, maybe five, ten, or even a hundred years, or a few hundred years, and you had been hearing these different things of all different things in the spirit world that you've been investigating, but your own brightness had not been improving, 
and then you find a group of people on earth who are brighter than you in their appearance and who look nicer than you in their appearance of their spirit body, what would you feel? You'd feel quite jealous and quite upset. And so quite a lot of the spirits who were here yesterday were feeling quite jealous and projecting their jealousy at you. So if you were sensitive to those things, you would have felt this quite strange emotions yesterday because there was a whole group of spirits who were very keenly interested in what was being presented yesterday. Then there was this whole, whole other groups of spirits. And by the way, there were like hundreds of thousands of these in these groups projecting these different emotions. Just if the mic can go through it, thanks. Just wondering why the spirits that want to be here can't talk to the ones that are not happy about being here? And for a start, there's a, there are many group of the ones who want to be here, they are grouped into many different groups too. And the law of attraction is what determines which group you're in, if you like. Now, one of the groups of the people who were here and interested in the setting were people who had by now opened up emotionally enough to actually hear the message that God wants to connect to them and they can connect to God. So there's that group of spirits. And then there's a whole other group of spirits who are just jealous of your appearance. Now, often, instead of, uh, if you have an emotion, and this applies to us here on earth often, if we have an emotion of jealousy, for example, we will often not listen to a person who's actually wrapped with what they're hearing from that person. If all we'll feel is our own jealousy. And in the spirit world, of course, remember that your feelings are more heightened, so even the negative feelings are more heightened as well. So what that means is that if you have a feeling of jealousy, you feel so embroiled in the, in the spirit of jealousy that it's very, very hard for you to open your ears enough to listen to what the message is. And oftentimes you don't actually want to hear the message. A spirit of jealousy is a, is a projection of anger. So when we're in this state, jealous state, and these spirits in the jealous state, all they want to do is project their anger at the people who look better than they do. Does that make sense? They don't want to yet get into the state of asking the person why they look better. And that's something that they need to learn, that if they just asked, the person who looks in a better condition would probably tell them, and then they wouldn't have to feel so jealous because they would actually get to that new condition as well. But when you're in the spirit world and when you're here on earth, often your emotions take over all of your interactions. So many of you have felt that when I've talked about a certain subject, right? when I've discussed a certain subject with you, your emotion of that subject has taken you over and it's like you've got no hearing after then, you know, you're just so embroiled in the emotional response that you have to what's being said. And that's exactly the same with what it's like in the spirit world. The truth is that many of these spirits are really, they can easily be assisted, but because they're in that state of just wanting to project anger or project jealousy or, you know, and, 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 you know, and they're in that emotion, they can't actually even listen to a spirit who wants to assist them. And it's a bit like, again, a person on earth. If you get a person who's in a rage, do they, are they very reasonable at the same time? No. So they, they, their rage has to be worked through and, or calmed down before you can actually have some kind of dialogue with them. And it's very much the same there too. So don't think that just because you're past, you've got a whole new set of emotions, because you haven't. And your emotions are very raw there as well, because they're all easily seen. So while at the moment in a physical body, we can sort of cover over what our emotions are, in the spirit form, you can't cover over what your emotions are. Any single person can see what your emotions are. And in fact, one of the first emotions you feel when you pass into the spirit world is this feeling that you're naked emotionally that everyone can see every single bad thing you've ever done and every single bad thing you've ever felt and every single thing you've ever done in your entire life is all openly exposed to the people that are looking at you and, and some people just go away and hide in their own little corner not wanting anybody to see anything about themselves. So this is the things we need to keep in mind with regard to our spirit friends. One of the, whole, one of the goals of these sessions is to actually get into a state of helping them. So what I'm going to start doing from this session onwards is asking if any of you have any spirits with you who have been impressing upon you that they want to have a talk with me, I'd be happy to have a talk with them through you. And that way we can develop your mediumship in the process. Um, and as long as you're happy to come up here with me and do that, um, I'm happy to do that. And you'll get an idea of how you can actually assist spirits as well. In fact, 
The next two sessions after this session and the new uh, thing that I'm going to go through today with you for the next month, um, after that we'll be actually focusing more on how you can actually feel spirits' emotions and then after that we'll be focusing on how you can help them emotionally. So we'll focus on those two things in the next two sessions after the homework for this session. So sessions five and six basically will be handling those kind of uh, feelings so that we can help start helping the spirits with our own mediumship. Now, um, how did that, you all go with homework? Those of, who are here to, who found out about the homework, who actually did their homework? Oh, that's a lot more than last time. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, so remember the homework was that you would buddy up with somebody you would do a channeling about your own um, condition, your own emotional condition, or in particular focusing on the emotions that are right there ready to work on inside of you now. And then your buddy would do the same thing for you, and then you would do the same thing for your buddy. So in other words, what we would do is we'd finish up getting two channelings for ourselves in that. One channeling would be from ourselves, and the other channeling would be from our buddy. And if we're healing, um, what we would be doing is feeling the emotions of our buddy and telling them what we feel the emotions are. And then our buddy doing the same thing for us. So who would like to go first and tell me about their pair of experiences? Come up, Tim. Who's your pair? You want to both come up? You're okay with that? And if you can grab those two microphones when you come down, so that we've got microphones that you can speak into. And you can sit down there. So which one are we doing first? You'll be you right. You'll up. be right. You'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So firstly, Tim, you're channeling for yourself. Yep. Um, if you could look at, look at what that was all about and maybe just read a bit of, read some of it for us. Okay. It's fairly long, is it? It is quite long. I, oh, awesome. of, I got into the start of it and I got a little bit sidetracked with other things because I sort of I did feel yeah, spirit presence around me, so I sort of went into that and yeah. Yeah, wrote about that as well. But Good it kind of gets back to it. Yeah. All right. So what you're going to have to do is hold that mic right up close to you, otherwise, uh, yes. otherwise no one will hear it. So <laughs> right up close. Yeah, like you're eating it like that. All right. yeah. Dear Spirit God, please help me to build my relationship so I may be closer to God. I'm learning new things every day, but I feel so much darkness surrounds me constantly. I feel I'm looking for darkness as opposed to seeking from my true heart for the bright light and God's love to fall upon me. I feel unworthy and too guilty for the life that I've led to qualify for God's love, and I feel like I need to get every ounce of air out before I'm capable of receiving any love or even proof of his existence. You know this. And going on my law of attractions, being witnessed right now, I need to dive into the causal reasons why I have poor feelings towards both males and females. Ultimately, this will get me to a place of where I'm able to see and feel love from two of the most important beings in my life, my soulmate and God. Please understand, although I feel a lot of hatred for the events and the surroundings with my law of attractions, most of the time I am forever grateful to my spirit guides and my spirit friends who I'm not really aware if I have any right now, but you're actually telling me and feeding me right now, it's quite, I have quite a few from all different types of spheres. I see many curious spirits with lots of sadness to release and I see it is in a far, far distance, one very bright spirit. She has wings wearing white. Her brightness is almost too bright for my eyes and her face has the same characteristics as Rani's. Previously, I'm not quite sure. I believe this to be a celestial spirit waiting for my growth so they can be closer to me, progressing closer to God and assist me further on my path to oneness. But now I believe I'm actually seeing my soulmate and it is Rani. She's a very bright and beautiful spirit. She's waiting for me because I'm hanging around lower spheres trying to help others to progress, possibly hindering my own progress by attempting to help others progress with me as opposed to using my own path. There is now selfishness here. Do not fear. Remember your soulmate knows not time, but just the loving desire and longing for you to be rejoined, to be a complete soul. I'm quite a bit brighter than the others that surround me, but they are attracted to that 
Now I have a group of many middle-aged men and many beyond their 50s. I'm not sure how to guide them, but they stay with me curious to the brightness of others. I see their capability to grow and they are becoming slowly aware. Also, but getting close to them, seeing the brightness which they truly possess within is still quite a distance away. I feel a few begin to cry as a form of release coming on. They know another world exists for them, but are still feeling unworthy to enter it. Um, to enter. A smaller re release again comes from disappointment because of a long existing sadness. It's hard to see your worthiness on any level. There is also a feeling of putting a burden on other people. Why should you help us? You don't have my damage. You should go on, be with your soulmate. She is waiting for you and will wait an eternity watching us. I feel like you helping me is keeping you from my soulmate and everlasting love from one another. That is quite untrue. Though, my friends, my soulmate may not be attracted enough to me right now to be right here with us, with us by my side. We may not exactly be side by side right now, but we are both aware of each other's presence. We do, not connect, or we do connect with each other and we do feel each other's love. See, we are aware of the eternal bliss of each other's existence and longing for each other. And for now, it is, very, it is a very loving place. And it's a place I'm aware is out there. And my greatest feelings right now is that every single person deserves to have that. And I feel we can all progress together. See, I am unable to feel God's love right now, but I know now I have seen my soulmate who is real and has a longing for me and greatly and in, in, ever increasingly as I have for them. This was once something I refused to believe, but I wanted to be true and desired their existence deep down and hid for a long time as I was in error. So my feelings towards God is that they are also existing somewhere. He's also existing somewhere. But my vision does not carry strong enough yet to see. As my soulmate lingers in the distance for me, I believe God lingers much further than that. I have many unresolved issues with God. I too am still yet to discover and release in order to not to see God, but to even feel the awareness of his existence. So stay with me, my friend. You do cause me great unease to my material body night and day. But if I'm able to have releases, this is the chance for us all to grow closer together in love. Can I just stop you for a moment? Yeah. So do you feel that was a channeling? Um, you need to use your mind. In the first part, I didn't, but I haven't re really reread over this. Yep. Um, and I feel like what I was doing was kind of going through and trying to confirm a lot of my own beliefs. Yep. And then as I started to go into that, I had these visions of people being around me and um, seeing spirits that are a lot brighter. Yep. But then I felt that God was a lot further than that for me, so uh, that I couldn't see. Yep. And I just yeah, felt presences of things around me, so that triggered um, visual things that came up. And yeah, that's just what I write down, whether it made sense or not. Yep. So what, what you were really doing is, is saying your own experience. Mm. The, the, the goal of the channeling is actually not to say so much your own experience, but actually connect to a spirit and have them say to you the experience that, or the emotions that they believe you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. What, what, what's happened actually though in what you've done in your music, if I'd call them your musings, which are very spirit influenced, is that you've actually identified some of your core emotional issues, mm. although you don't believe them to be the, your core emotional issues. I think what I've, I feel what I've done in my own self-deception is seen that it's somebody else and made a story when it's actually me. Right. Yeah. So what, what's happening a lot there for you is that you, you obviously have issues to work through with regard to why you have such a strong desire for your soulmate, and it's not at this stage a pure desire for your soulmate. So there's a, there's a needy projection yeah. at your soulmate and that comes out very, very strongly in, what, in your musings. The other thing that comes out quite strongly is you feel gods are far off still. And so that's something to have a look at at an emotional level. Why do you feel gods are far off? So th this was the one before you did any development, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, so what you were doing there really is not receiving messages from spirits. You were receiving pictures which you were then interpreting through your emotional injuries mm. and then writing down that along with some of your own viewpoints of yourself. Yeah. What, when you get to be a clear channel, what you will finish up doing is yourself will almost step aside 
and what will happen is that you will get exactly their words being said to you. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Rather than your interpretation of pictures or, or events, you'll get exactly their words and exactly the import of their message to you. Whereas, because your guide would have said something very, very different to you. Mm. The feelings that I've got from them was, is that they would actually say some very strong things to you about your neediness with women yeah. and some of the emotions you need to work through there. Yeah. And they would have also talked about um, the reason why you feel the distance to God. Now, they got finished up getting that message to you, yeah. Yeah. but only in a long roundabout way. And it also got sort of... Uh, you could say uh, it disappeared in the detail, I suppose yeah, you could yeah. say. That's what I've found like when I do a lot of writings is I'll just start writing on the computer and it could be about anything but yeah. in parts there'll be different things which I, which I pick up on and I, I said to you this morning when I did another one is right at the end was it last message and I'm like well that's what I should have been writing about the whole time. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what's happening for you a lot is that um, if you could just allow yourself to cut to the chase, if you like, yeah. and actually focus on the real point. But what's, what's happening inside of you at the moment is that there is this strong desire to justify your emotion rather than actually go up even deeper than that and feel the underlying causal emotion. Yeah. And that's what, one of the things that was definitely coming out in that... In that uh, I wouldn't call it a channeling, I would call it a yeah. writing, yeah, yeah. of which there was some spirit influence. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but a lot of it was also your influence. Yep. Can I see what Rani wrote about you? Yep. Uh, the, first the first one that you wrote for him about him. See, I think the first one is about my family. And, and your feelings. Yeah, and I kind of went into Tim's... If we hold up the mic so they rank it here. It's kind of not about Tim, really. It's kind of about his mum. Oh, OK, <laughs> so, OK. This is interesting. But then yeah. I kind of thought, oh, maybe this is about my family. Okay. Now, can you see how both of you are doing the same kind of thing in your first one? Yeah. Like, yeah, because uh, our so, second ones are quite similar as well. Okay. So, yeah. so there's something going on there, isn't there, in terms of needing each other's approval mm -hmm. and needing each other's acceptance. Yeah. Right? Um, when, when you... Later on, we'll be cho choosing a person that we don't know when we do a buddy thing. And, and my suggestion when you do that, you're going to have to very, be very much more reliant on, on what those spirits are saying to you because you don't know the person who's coming, who, who you're doing the channeling for. Does that make sense? So you're going to have to be very reliant on the spirit coming to you. Can I, instead of reading that one then, can, yeah. we, can we talk about your second one? Did you yeah. notice any improvement between the two? Mm, the same emotions for me came up for Tim, right. which I was surprised about because right. I thought they might have been different. Yeah. Um, did you want me to read that one? Sure. Can we read uh, some of the points of it rather than the full? Um, oh. I know that's a bit hard to do. You <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, just, just start reading and I might stop okay. you at different places. Yep, okay. Rani, you are. No, no, that's me. Rani, Tim's emotion that he is currently denying himself is guilt and shame. Tim has come a long way within, his, within this emotion, but however, I feel there is still more that Tim is not allowing himself to feel. Tim is afraid of finding himself for who he really is, as for so long he has been a robot gliding along to everybody else's rules and regulations. And in a sense, Tim got very used and comfortable with that. In his soul, however, he knew that there was another way, but this way was much easier. Now Tim is struggling to find out himself in this new way, as he now has to look at himself emotionally deeply. And Tim is finding this hard. I believe Tim will find his way and if he just takes a moment to fully understand his guilt and shame and feels it to his core, this will open up the gates to who, he, to who he really is and he will no longer hide himself to the world. Instead, he will stand proudly and say, this is me. All I feel is Tim is quite lost within himself and he really needs to feel these emotions. He's resisting at present, which is his free will. However, God is God and us spirits are always here to guide, love and support Tim in his journey. I feel Tim feels quite alone, which is okay, as again he needs to go through that emotion. He will find himself if his soul truly des uh, desires to. Yeah. So what do you feel about that? Um, I feel you need to sorry. Um yeah, I feel it's a big thing in Tim, the guilt and shame he has. Yeah. Um and whenever we try and connect to it or he tries to, he just doesn't want to go into it. Right. 
And did I, you feel that before you channeled that information? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that has probably influenced what? Probably. What you've okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, the truth is, Tim does have some guilt and shame, but there's actually some other emotions that are blocking his guilt and shame. Yeah. And, and those emotions are the emotions that your spirit guide would have focused on if they could have. Okay. But because your feelings were quite strong about the guilt and shame, yeah. they couldn't get those other emotions through to you. And those emotions are more to do with the, the, the anger that you feel about how women have treated you in your life. And that's what's shutting down the deeper emotions that you need to allow yourself to go through. Does that make sense? Mm. And so at the moment you would like to skip over that set of emotions because being angry with women for yourself is a very like dangerous thing because it means that if you're angry with the woman you're going to actually finish up the woman's going to leave you and then where you will be right yeah. so that's how you feel and so what you do is you shut down that now you can handle the anger totally differently of course and we'll talk about in emotions of self-deception how to handle them um, in the talk next week but um, that's really the message they would have tried to get through to you is like the anger is the result of deep feelings of being unloved and unwanted from women rather than so much guilt and shame the guilt and shame comes about because he gets angry and then he wants to punish himself, yeah. which is actually the self-deception emotion uh, that keep, leads you away from dealing with the underlying emotion that you have with women. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what would happen is the spirits with you wanted to say those things to you, but both of you have some very, very clear opinions of what the other person's problems are, <laughs> yeah. which are actually not true. Right? <laughs> and it's those opinions that have come through mostly in what you've done, although both of you have the ability to channel this other material. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one of the suggestions I have for you as a couple is to look very sincerely at what's going on as to why you want the other person to have a certain set of emotions that you believe they should have. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, you actually believe he should have guilt and shame because of sometimes he gets into a rage, right? And, and you feel like he should be ashamed of himself for that, right? And he has some of these emotions about how his soulmate should act and love him and care for him and all those kind of things, right? Which have also come through in the channeling. In reality, both of those sets of emotions are not the real emotions. They are actually all of these capping things. And because you feel so strongly about it with each other, you're not allowing your spirit guides to actually tell you the truth about what is underlying those emotions. So my suggestion over the coming month, aside from the new thing that I'll be giving you, is to revisit these channelings, but this time without, uh, try to go into them without any preconception of each other, mm -hmm. and then see what you get. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah that would be good. Yeah. Thank, thanks for those coming up. Cool. <laughs> That's yours too, isn't it? Yep. Who else would like to come up? Monica, who's your partner? Debbie Angela. Debbie Angela. Angela wants to come up too. G'day. Bring the mic, bring a mic with you. <laughs> so right, you just you know when you're nervous, you just let your legs shake. Okay. You know, that's fine. That's that's part of letting it all go. You see. <laughs> All right, so um, who'd like to go first? You go first because I haven't found one. All right, now both of you will need to hold the mics up close to you. Um, so the first channeling moniker is for your buddy or for yourself? Which one was it? I'll do for Angela. Okay, so it's for, An for Angela. Mics need to be on, so we'll just make sure of those. There you go. Okay, this is the first one for um, the soul condition of Angela. <clears throat> Hello Monica, it is wonderful to now feel the joy in your heart as you get into a state of excitement and wonder in preparation for your communications with me. A little bit odd, I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah, I'm just a little slower. Yeah, slower. A little um, I might just knock down the volume a little as well and we'll see how we go. Just a little slower guys because it's, uh, you don't have to rush through this, we're all relaxed. I'll stop you for I'm, I'm running out of time. <laughs> um, okay. I have waited so, uh, for so long to have such a connection. It is so full of love from me to you and flows freely now from you to me. I'm in such a state of joy also. 
And so we will now discuss the soul condition of your friend Angela. She is indeed a sweet soul who has much to offer the world through her wisdom and foresight for the future. She has such a willingness to grow and evolve, and she inherently knows the importance of residing on Earth at this time. She has indeed many gifts to offer the group with which you surround your, now yourself at this time of growth, and she will be one of the forerunners in creating a loving community in which to live in the future. She will be a comfort to so many when the earth changes occur and will be considered by many to be the, deep source, uh, uh, sorry, the source of deep feminine strength and quiet leadership. You have much in common in this respect. It should not surprise you then that you have attracted each other into your experience at this juncture. She has many injuries in her soul condition that require her to let go of any preconceived ideas as to what womanhood is all about. Her role models have had interesting ways of portraying to her what a feminine woman is in truth. She has been surrounded by many women who have been submissive towards the men in their lives and so she has mistaken submission for weakness and aggression for strength. Until she feels and releases these emotions, she will be unable to embrace the tasks at hand in redefining who she is as a woman. She also needs to look deeply at the men who have shaped her role as a woman and ask herself what role she played in theirs. This promises to be a most interesting path to walk down and much is to be learnt in this respect. Angela has a strong connection to God and needs to trust that this path that she now walks is one of resoluting, uh, resoluting trust and faith. She has had many disappointments in her life, especially in relationships, and it would be wise for her to release any anger towards God for the role that uh, she feels he has played in this respect. She has had many glimpses of the love that God has for her, but is still afraid to fully commit to the love of God based on the disappointments that she has experienced from the men in her life. She has much to delve into with regard to the relationship with her mother, who is no longer around her. She needs to realize that until the time has come when she has fully released the pain experienced through her mother's actions and emotional injuries, forgiveness will not come easily. True forgiveness is the path to divine love and liberation from pain. This is easier said than done, I assure you, but when the moment comes, when the sweet surrender abounds to the resistance of letting go painful thoughts and memories, it is quickly replaced by the tender and exquisite breath of love and connection to those who have caused so much pain and anguish. This is to be a vital step in her progression, the forgiveness of her mother, who now relies on Angela to lead the way. Her commitment to children on the earth is also a vital part of her evolvement. She will have a huge part to play in re-establishing how children are taught in the future based on her own experiences and observations as to how children should be allowed to progress and evolve through the use of education and guidance. In order for her to do this, she needs to realize that although there may be constraints in the current systems of education, that it is completely within the realms of possibility to change and transform this one child at a time. It frustrates her greatly that children who are not given the scope and freedom to ex express themselves at a, lever, at a level which would encourage them to learn and grow in love. From a very early age, she felt the constraint within her own experiences as a child, and it is with this feeling of frustration that the determination will come to change and transform the system of education today. Forgiveness of those who sought to constrict her personality through methods of painful retribution and humiliation need at first to be fully experienced and released before a truthful expression can be made by her in this field. Angela has much grief to fully experience, especially surrounding her mother, before she can fully find the freedom in loving another. She has not had much luck, as she would call it, in relationships, especially with other women, and feels deeply unworthy of having a deep and meaningful relationship with others, especially other women. She needs to realize that this only comes from the fear of rejection that was caused by her mother and auntie while she was growing up. This is something that with much diligence would occur, will occur in the next foreseeable while. Angela has much wisdom to offer you, Monica, and it would be well to listen to her, for it is as it should be. Trust that what she has, trust that what she has to say comes from a place of love and honesty and a desire to heal as much as you do even in moments when the p truth may be painful to hear. And so it is time to end this discourse. 
I look forward to our next one, as I know there is much you wish to ask and much, uh, much to know. Till then, uh, Joseph. Hi. Angela, Hi. how did you feel about what Monica channeled? Um, it, um, it was just a huge gift, more than anything. Yeah. Um, to be validated, you know, in those areas, yeah. but also um, just it just opened everything up for me. Emotionally, yep, yeah. yep. Um, so you felt that a lot of the things oh, that were yeah. channeled were very true with yeah. what was happening inside totally. of yourself. Yeah, yep. there's only one or two things that I'm sort of still a bit, you know, slightly, you know, I could ask her about them, but yeah. um, everything else, yeah, it was, it was quite yeah. clear for you. Yeah. What what were those things that you mm -hmm. felt? Um, I can't even really tell you. I've got, That's them, okay. I've got them marked. Yeah. But um, if you've got them marked. So she gave you this channeling um, and then you marked it sort of up a bit? Look, no, I went, I went bush and ignored it for two weeks. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> okay. Um, it was only yesterday morning that I, that you went and marked that it I faced it all. And yeah. So, so the channeling for you is so powerful that you first, the first response was to avoid it, really. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. And then when you started reading through it, obviously it's triggering you emotionally mm. quite a lot, even yeah. still. Yeah. So that, that, that really demonstrates to you the power of a good channeling, doesn't it? Like, a good channeling will actually hone in on the emotions that particularly if the channeling is about emotions and emotional help that a person needs, the good channeling will hone in on those emotions and really identify them. Now what I liked about the channeling was there was a mixture of positive comments mm. that Joseph made as well as, as, well as comments about, uh, about where, where you needed to work through some emotions. Um, so, so it was a really balanced channeling too. It wasn't something That's that right. was all just pretty yeah. and oh, aren't you wonderful and you know you've got nothing to do with everything's fine and you know it's not sort of thing. It wasn't like that. No, that's but, right. but it was a channeling yeah. that was no. very direct and specific. Absolutely. Very yeah. helpful. And yeah. still is, you know. Now when Monica, when you did the uh, exercise then of working through some of the emotions, mm -hmm. did you feel that your channeling about Angela was better the next time? Because you did a second one for Angela. I, I don't know if I would say, because we only kind of read it to each other last night. Right. And to be quite honest, I'm, so much of it is similar to my own stuff at the moment that I'm actually yeah. not quite clear, quite honestly. Can, um, you, can you see the two of you, how your own law of attraction has brought the so two of you together? I think that's what was so amazing. This was so powerful yeah. for me as well. I find it interesting, actually, and many of you have chosen people for this exercise that you knew or partly knew. Isn't that right, correct? Okay. Uh, why did you do that? There's an emotional reason why you did that. Can you see that? You see, this exercise perhaps would have been more powerful for you if you chose somebody that you didn't know um, in terms of working through and trusting your spirit guides more and so forth. Can you see that? Yeah. But I'm not saying that it's, it's been a bad exercise. I'm no. just saying that it could be more powerful. The, the, the channeling that you gave for her had a few areas that were your emotions oh, rather than hers. I really see that and today see actually that? for the first time, yeah. 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 And the parts that you read where your emotions come up obviously were those, those places. So there were parts of the, that actually were influencing um, what you were channeling for Angela. But, but the law of attraction has brought you both together too. So, so you can see the law of attraction is working because of similar emotions. And so that's, all, that's also something that often happens for any person doing mediumship. So we often choose a medium because of the emotions in ourselves and the emotions in the medium. Remember right at the start of this whole exercise in the very first presentation I did about the laws of rapport, I said that the medium attracts certain spirits, but the medium and the person attract each other together as well, right? And you can see this happening quite a lot, you know, in mediumship that's done normally. So, um, with regard to the accuracy, you felt that was very accurate channeling. I feel it's pretty accurate channeling as well. And it's triggered you emotionally now. It's opened up parts of you emotionally that you hadn't opened before. So that's a very, very good, very good thing for you, isn't it? Um, how did you go on the second channeling, Monica? 
Again, I'm in a bit of a blur, if I'm being really honest, because we only shared it last night, and yep. I've been processing some pretty heavy stuff this morning. So. Okay. So, so, with regard to the exercise, how do you feel you went with the exercise that, that we had? Remember, the exercise was to, to remember to continue to pray for divine love, but it was also to note down your law of attraction and then deal with the stuff that happened in your law of attraction. I think the big difference was it really delved into, I think, maybe her relationship with her husband. Good. So, so I mean, there were differences. Sorry, it's, it's a bit blurry, but I yeah. think the main thing was... Okay. Just a bit further away. Away? Yeah, okay. just, just... I think that the biggest uh, change was that it really delved into her relationship with her husband. And I was also really aware that... I was, it, there were filters coming through me, so I made notion and, and didn't, in, you know. And your law of attraction during the month was? <sighs> You've been dealing with sexuality issues too, haven't you? And, uh, and soulmate huge, issues. Huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mother stuff. All mother stuff. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mary, you wanted to say something? You need to... You can't do that. <laughs> I was just going to ask you to comment, if you, but you started to do it anyway, on what ha your law of attraction at the moment and how y you even, yeah, or even that you, you know, you said to me you could feel when it was your stuff coming through in Angela's um, channeling. I just thought it might be beneficial for other mediums to sort of feel that difference and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I could really feel the second time around uh, and with other channelings that I did this week that... Um, it's really obvious now to me when it's my own emotional filter. Yeah. And so what Mary suggested was just either high, like not to, AJ had suggested not deleting it, never deleting it, and actually using it as a something to look back on to see where I've actually progressed from. Yeah. But it was really obvious that one thing that came up about um, Angela and her husband was my desire to humiliate men or punish them publicly. Yeah. So, so this uh, desire to humiliate men and, public, and punish them publicly caused you to channel certain things towards An Angela that was in sort of almost encouraging her to do the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. And as soon as I became, I mean, I, I, this time I immediately knew. And, yeah. and I could also, I, I can feel the difference yeah. when that information comes through. Yeah. Well, so. so can you see how also, if we haven't got our emotional state correct, we can actually encourage a person to do something in disharmony with love through our mediumship, which actually can be very damaging to them if they trusted it. It could be quite damaging to them. So you can see the responsibility of a medium as well in all of this. So, so the beauty of doing all this like we're doing it is that, is that we can correct a lot of these things and, and if we can't self-correct it, then we can talk about it in the group and correct it that way or talk about it with each other and correct it that way. So. With all of you, even if you don't come up, talk about the mediumship that you've done for each other and talk about, like, what do you feel about it now? Like, do you still feel it's correct? Because, like, there is... I've heard some of you read some of your mediumship not in the public setting, but... And what I'm finding is that quite a number of you believe you're channeling when you're actually channeling yourself. You're actually feeling your own emotions about the person rather than actually channeling a spirit guide's emotions about the person. And if you, if you do that, what you're actually doing is imposing your emotions upon the person. And quite often what you assess their emotions to be is not going to be what their emotions are. And so it's very important for you to understand that that's going on. So that's good that you could recognize, Monica, when, when that's happening. That's a powerful thing for a medium. If you're humble enough to see that, that's a powerful thing because it can help you a lot work through your own emotions. So as soon as you feel that feeling rise of anger towards men and want to punish men, you now know, wow, there's a big area there that's going to affect any of my mediumship with a male. Like any man comes along and wants some mediumship from me, <laughs> I'm going to be treating them a lot different than Angela gets treated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If that emotion's in me. Yeah. And how did you go with the exercise, Angela? Um, well, I'm a bit of a novice at this. That's, that's fine. Um, oh, I had it. Um, I, find, I, found, I felt that my first one was probably better than my second one. Right. I found it quite confronting. I mean, we're talking about Monica or mine? Uh, for me? Your first one for yourself. Oh, okay. What was that like? Um, oh, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> um, Angela, your soul condition is such that you are not able yet to receive divine love. 
due to the inconsistencies of your desires. Yeah. These desires come from deep um, and childhood injuries that, are, that were sustained over much of your life from the male members of your family, particularly your father. Yeah. Your understanding of or non-understanding of these desires and injuries based um, have I'll hold those, you can hold have, your... Uh... ...have kept you seeking the approval of men and those who you perceive as powerful, both men and women. The desire to be recognised and applauded by man has almost totally replaced your desire for truth and love. Yeah. Thus, you have caused much confusion and pain for yourself and others. This pain to you, to your soul, is the emotion of not being good enough. You absorbed this from your father, when you deep, whom you deeply loved and believed it to be true for most of your life. You still believe it, and there is much anger yet to be released associated with these feelings. You have dealt with some of this, and you are well on your way, so keep on. Okay. <laughs> so that was like, I just, everything, I just finish it, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's no real end. All right, can I comment about... Yes, please. This is a lot of your own emotion again, yeah. but there is some spirit promptings in this yeah. message, right? <laughs> but one of the first things that you said, if you just read the first line again... Your soul condition is such that you're not able yet to receive divine love due to the inconsistencies of your desires. That is totally untrue. Right. <laughs> and that is your opinion of yourself. Does that make sense? And it's certainly not what you've guide, your guide feels about you. The guide knows that you have actually received divine love. So, so it's certainly not true. It's something that you feel about yourself. Now, what you start saying, the reason why you're connecting with it, it's very good for you to read this out loud a, a number of times, actually. Yeah. Not, not in your head, but out loud. Okay. Yeah. Um, because you'll connect with some of these emotions. What you mentioned from an emotional perspective is all very accurate. But you actually make some very negative comments about yourself. And down the bottom here, you talk about the anger. There's much anger to be released. Mm -hmm. The truth is that the anger is the choice that you're making to not get under the, the, uh, uh, into the other emotion, which is the emotion that's mentioned above that. Can you see the emotion above that, which was the feeling of not being good enough? Which is a very, very strong feeling in you. Mm -hmm. And so when, by this stage, you were starting to connect to your guide, actually. And that's why you terminated it. Um. Your guide wanted to say some nice things about you, and you don't like hearing nice things about you. Can you see that? Like you actually term the, your guide wanted you to keep to keep going, and you would have actually connected more strongly with your guide if you had. But what actually happened for you is that. You started feeling you might, you know, that there was started. You started connecting emotionally to what you're saying, but also you were starting to have a stronger connection with your guide, mm -hmm. and you started getting afraid about what they would say, and that some of it would be nice, and you can't cope with anything nice being said about you at the moment. <laughs> Does that make sense? I can feel so, somewhere the truth of that. So yeah. there's a resistance in you mm -hmm. to hear nice things about yourself. Mm -hmm and there's some very strong emotions that are driving that inside. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel about that? Did you feel it was a channeling or did you feel it was actually more comments about yourself from yourself? Um, I, I don't think I even wanted to feel about it or think about it after I'd done it. Right. You know? I just... I just said, well, that'll do. You know, I've done my, I've done my homework. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> awesome. This is like school mum stuff. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, most of the time, I think every time I channel, it's just me. You know, the gen m there are bits where I feel, oh, that's n maybe not me. But well, it started off being you. Yeah. And then as you got into your emotions, yeah. it started now being prompted by yeah. the, your spirit friends yeah. quite yeah. strongly, actually. Yeah. But if you had listened to it, you would have cried. And you don't go for crying very much still. Like you still yeah. find it yeah. difficult. You won't sometimes yeah. want to close that down. Yeah. And so my suggestion is if you just allowed yourself to cry and keep channeling, yeah. you would have actually received some really good information about things. If you just, or you would have cleared some of these emotions yeah. right yeah. at that point, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So, so that's very good mm. that, that you do that. Mm. Bear in mind though that because of this very negative viewpoint you have about yourself, mm. you're not going to be able to channel very accurately no. about yourself. No. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. What was your second? Uh, I think it was better. Um, this is everywhere. As you can see. I think, uh, I'm just impressed you did your homework. <laughs> <laughs> so now we turn to you. Your hesitancy, and I'd just done Monica's and I felt it was just, you know, really no help to her at all. So I was, right. and I so said, well, you... this time I'm just going to write. Not, I'm not going to worry about what the end of the sentence is going to say. I'm just going to, you know. So you'd done Monica's, yeah. felt it was useless, yes. is your yes. feeling inside yes. yourself. <laughs> and then you thought, well, blow this. I'm yeah. just going to throw it all up in the air and see where it all falls. Yeah. And then you channeled this. Yes. Okay. So now we turn to you, dear one. Your hesitancy and doubt do let you down. The flow of thoughts from me to you needs to be, tr needs to be trusted and allowed to flow without reserve. That is entirely better, and now you can hardly keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> now you, see, now you've switched into channeling. Yeah. And in fact, your guide is saying that to you, mm. but now that's what's happening. Mm. You, what happened, and you would have felt this switch happen in you, mm. where you're just like, da, 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 yes. and you didn't even well, know. Well, I couldn't keep up. All you, of a sudden, yeah. I wasn't you know, rubbing out. And and you, <laughs> you couldn't think about it anymore, no, no, right? That's and not. that's a very mm. good sign, right? Mm. We are delighted to be with you so closely this morning. Your trust in us is, giving, is growing every time you do these exercises, and we hope to have a long and close association with you. So now, what have you been up to these past weeks? Not a lot, as you felt this morning, while attempting to be of some help to your friend Monica. Yes, there has been little progress these last two weeks. Family time is the excuse, but you know that it has definitely been an avoidance of those issues Monica and her guides so beautifully set out for you. Never mind. We feel your intentions... Can I, can I just yeah. stop you? Now you're getting back to a mixture yeah. of what's yeah, going on. I can feel it. What happened was that you started this channel just here mm. when, when they were mm. delighted to be mm. with you mm. and everything else. Mm. Well, it was all feeling too good for you yes. now, right? <laughs> and remember, this is your big emotion. Is I, no, 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 hang on a sec. No, no, this is not right. I, I, I'm not this good, right? And so now you start actually interfering with their channeling mm. Mm. by actually putting in these, these uh, things that are, that are actually judgmental yes. of you, yeah. which is not what they yeah, actually did. Right. Does that make yeah. sense? They, they weren't feeling judgmental of mm. you when they channeled this at all. Mm. They were very impressed in between that line and that line, mm. which, which was about mm. four lines long. Mm. <laughs> they could feel, oh, beauty, we're going to have a chance here. <laughs> we're going to have a chance here to actually say what we really want to say about you. And then you start kicking in because you don't want to hear mm. Yeah, well, I think the of rest it, right? of it is like that. You don't want to hear the good things. Mm. Yeah, so let's keep going. Never mind, we feel your intentions and know your plans for the next weeks. There is much to do and we will assist you wherever we can. The seven areas that you have marked that require your attention do indeed have priority. Go for them, especially around your mother and the motions that you picked up from her. Trust in this work that you are doing to bring all the scattered parts of your life together. Your children, your partner and their patterns and ways of being will all melt in the melting pot of love where you have, when you have cleared your emotions. And that's what I went with. Yeah. We look no. forward to the river life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there was some comments there that were definitely their comments. Yes, that's exactly mm -hmm. what they feel. What, what the issue, again, for you a lot of times is, is that you, you start hearing some good things about yourself mm. and then you really start tucking yourself away. You really pull, mm. pull back and mm. withdraw. Mm. The other thing is that um, this issue with your mother, um, you may not be aware just yet, but... But actually, most of your opinions of men are not from your father, but they're actually from your mother. And so your mother's very, very strong opinions of men and how she treated men um, actually have guided many of your own opinions of men and as a result created your law of attraction with men. Does that make sense? So, so a lot of times when we deal with emotions, you'll find that you have these certain... You desire to have love from your father. Mm -hmm. Um, but that whole emotion was being driven by this emotion from your mother before you were even born. Um, so there'll be a lot of your mum stuff. This is why they keep encouraging her, you to go Her lack here. of self-worth, do you mean? Um, but also what she felt about men. She mm. had some deep anger and rage issues to deal with with men. And, and those emotions entered you as soon as you were, as soon as you were uh, incarnated, mm. as soon as you mm. were conceived, these emotions began entering you. So, so don't just think that all of your emotions from, about mm. men came from the men 
and how they treated well, it's you. That's definitely what I've thought. It's yeah. a total. The truth is, is actually most of your emotions with men have actually come from the woman who believed these things about men. Well, I, I, that's a. That's a, and you'll find that out. Right. This is why they keep referring you to your mother. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And saying there's quite a lot of issues to deal with right. with your mother. Now, the rest of, with the rest of that, mm. you can you could, you would have felt while you were writing it yeah. when you were actually allowing yes. the connection, yeah. when you were disallowing yes. the connection. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so my suggestion is to work through the emotion of unworthiness that you keep feeling when you yeah. allow the connection. So you allow the connection, they take over your hand yes. in that state, yeah. and off you go. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. da, 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 da. Yeah. and then all of a sudden your, yes. your mind starts yeah. kicking and say, no, 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 now you're saying something that's nice. No, 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 that can't be yeah. true. No, 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 actually I'm not very nice, and you know, I've yeah. got lots of problems, and yeah. everyone's, I'm responsible for everyone else's yeah. problems, and you know what I mean? And then that's what starts coming out then. And so what that's doing is interfering with mm -hmm. your actually cl your sure. clear channeling mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. So uh, besides the new um, thing coming up, mm -hmm. if you can actually focus on this area of allowing everything to come through, even if it's nice, yes. and when it's nice, yeah. just ball your eyes out. Yeah, right. Because that's what you feel like doing. You just feel like crying as soon as anybody says something nice about you. So do it. Let that emotion come up. Does that make sense? And you find after a while they'll take you over your hand and you'll be crying, you'll be crying and crying and they'll be still be able to use your hand, right? <laughs> and that means that you'll be a much better channel for, for mm -hmm. them with what they're saying to you. Okay. So if you can allow that to happen, that would help you a lot. Mm -hmm. And they uh, have a lot of love for you, as Monica mm -hmm. has stated, mm -hmm. and they really do care about both of you are very cared for, um, as are obviously most mm -hmm. of every all of us mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. But they, they are both very, or both of your guys are very interested in this process you're going through mm. because they feel that you're going to be able to help lots of people with this process. Mm. So you feel at the moment your judgment of Monica is Monica's a ch the clear channel, mm. I'm useless at this. Mm. And the, the truth is actually that you are going to become very clear as well quite rapidly as soon as you work through some of those emotions of feeling the unworthiness mm. and feeling that mm. terrible feeling that nobody can say anything nice about you. Mm. Uh, sorry, are you allowed to ask questions? Uh, yes, can I just give you the mic so you can... Just that I felt the same sort of thing that Angela would feel, I think. Like if somebody starts... Sorry, I'm not hearing you clearly. If somebody starts saying nice things about you, then the scary thing is that you'll start feeling yourself really good and um, that's too scary. All right. So how do you stop yourself feeling too good about yourself? Yep. Too, like, overinflated. So the emotion you have is this, uh, this deep emotion inside of yourself that if somebody says something nice about you, you'll get a big head and you'll become this terrible ogre person who just think, who's arrogant and thinks wonderful things about themselves and nobody can stand. And not the truth, you know, yeah. what you were talking about yesterday. The, yep. the inflated, the inflated. You'll have an inflated yes. opinion of yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're afraid yeah. of. So your fear of that is present, preventing you right, from actually going into the underlying causal emotion, which is that you actually feel very unworthy and you need to just have some really, really big cries about that. The truth is, is when you release the emotions of, of, uh, of your opinion of yourself, you'll get to a stage where you very rarely, if ever, even think about yourself at all when you're interacting with another person. You just feel your feelings and you say it. You feel your feelings and you say it. You, feel your feelings. you don't think I'm better than you because you don't even have that feeling pass through you anymore. And you don't think I'm worse than you because you don't even have that feeling pass through you anymore. So in all of your interactions with people, what will happen is you dig into that emotion. But the capping emotion or in the emotion of self-deception in this case is if I do that, I'll have a big head. So it's the fear of being seen to be arrogant that causes you to then not address the underlying emotion. Does that make sense? The fear of being seen to be or other people feeling you are arrogant. But what if there's um, the awareness that sometimes you think you are pretty good and you don't... And What's you know wrong with thinking right? you're pretty good? Because it's not right. <laughs> Why isn't it right? Can you see this is a false belief? 
What, yesterday in the prayer, what was one of the words that we used in the prayer? That I am the most wonderful of all... What you have standing before you is the most wonderful of all of God's creations. And that's the truth. You are the most wonderful of all of God's creations. That's not a statement of arrogance. That's just a statement of truth. But when you said before, what you need to feel is your unworthiness, isn't it easier to feel that by feeling unworthy rather than being told that you're so good? Or doesn't it matter? <laughs> you do not want to be told that you're good. Do you? No. So why don't you want to be told that you're good? Because I feel closer to God when I'm awful. <laughs> Well, you're not. That's a total untruth. When you feel awful, you are in total disagreement with God's opinion about you. God's opinion about you is that you are the greatest of her creations. So when you feel awful about yourself, you are not getting closer to God. You're actually getting further away from God. It's an, this is one of the fallacies that religion has taught us that we're, if, if we're in pain and we're terrible and we're sinners and we're depraved and all of these things that these religions have taught us, it's all untrue. And it doesn't bring us closer to God, it actually brings us further away from God. In that moment, you actually have a very, very different opinion to what God has of you. But, but if I cry, there's lots and lots of remorse about all the awful things I've done, and I thought remorse was a, a thing that, I yeah. mean, it felt... You certainly need to feel remorse about any things that you've done that are in disharmony with love. I'm not saying you don't need to feel that. But what I'm saying is you are still the most wonderful of God's creation. Just because you've done things disharmonious with love doesn't automatically then make you depraved. It just makes you full of emotional injuries like all, of us, all the rest of us. Does that make sense? It doesn't make you depraved. You are still God's wonderful creation. And in fact, when you release that emotion, you'll be even more wonderful. But the problem for you girls is that you, many, and many in the audience, is you don't want to hear you're wonderful. Right? And, and for some of you, you want to hear you're wonderful all the time because you actually you feel very unwonderful, if I could use that term. And the truth is that most of our core emotions are based around this feeling of unworthiness. And underneath the unworthiness are events that we need to release that created our unworthiness. Now, some of them are, in fact, related to our parents, which are very much, is very much, both cases are related to parents. So, so the key thing is to allow, when somebody says you're wonderful, to let that enter you and then have a big cry, because that's what you feel like doing in that moment, right? Have a big cry that actually somebody thought you were wonderful. Don't reject the statement that they made about you. Because when you reject the statement they made about you, you're actually rejecting your own law of attraction. Does that make sense? So allow people to tell you you're wonderful, and then if you feel bad about that, go and have a cry. Let yourself connect with the feeling that you don't feel what they just said about you. Does that make sense? Like, stop arguing that you're not wonderful, because <laughs> it's not a truth. You see, this is an emotion of self-deception too. You can put that on, babe, and come up uh, as well if you want. And this way that we can... Uh, I was just going to say, Karen, that you're closest to God when you're humble, when you're willing to feel all of your emotions. And actually this, this fear that you have is keeping you away from your emotions. So it's not really a question of um, our worth or our unworthy feelings that bring us closer or... This, you might disagree with this. Um, <laughs> further from God, you, you're right, when you're processing your unworthy feelings, you do feel a connection to God because you're very humble in that moment. And it, humbleness, remember, is the willingness to experience your emotions. But what's happening is when somebody says that you're wonderful and you are wonderful, but you don't want to feel that because it triggers all this unworthiness and you, you push it away and say, oh, I can't accept that because then I'll be arrogant. So can you see how you're sort of distancing yourself from your emotion, your emotional state. The reason why you feel, as Mary points out, you feel closer to God when you're crying in remorse about how terrible you are is because sometimes you're actually in a state, you are in a state, in that state of humility and feeling the different things that you've done in your life. But that doesn't mean that you're not wonderful. 
as soon as you believe you're not wonderful, what's happening is you're now pulling back from God. So, so there's a whole different state between being humble, as Mary's pointing out, and then unworthiness, which is a totally different condition. And, and I feel what's happening for Karen is that she doesn't... When someone says that you're wonderful, it triggers this feeling of unworthiness in you that is really hard to feel often. So you push it away by saying, I, I don't, in our family, we don't do that because that's arrogant, you're up yourself. Um, whereas if, once you process your feelings of unworthiness, you will have a greater sense of worth and you will be closer to feeling, yes, I am wonderful. But at the moment, it's sort of a self-deceiving cycle that's stopping you from getting into this stuff. Your statement of unworthiness, yeah, your statement of unworthiness is actually a self-deceiving emotion. It, it, it helps you avoid the deeper emotions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I can't connect to God because I'm unworthy is actually avoiding the action of connecting to God. Does that make sense to everyone? If I say to myself, I can't get to God because I'm unworthy to connect to God, I'm actually avoiding the actions I need to take to connect to God because I'm scared of them for some reason. What am I scared of? Well, one of the things you are terribly afraid of is is actually being a wonderful, powerful being. That's one of the things you're afraid of. You're so afraid of it that you think that place is an arrogant place, and it's not. It's actually the place God created us to be in. Right? So every one of you, when you're at one with God, will have a really, really good opinion of yourself. In fact, you'll have exactly the same good opinion of yourself as you have of every other person who's at one with God. So when somebody, like, like one of your guides, comes to you, they're at one with God. How do you feel about them? Oh, they're wonderful, they're loving, they're this, they're kind, they're that. Just feel their beautiful energy. Aren't they, like, they're such a beautiful being. You describe all these wonderful things about them, right? No problems at all because they're at one with God. Well, that's how you will see yourself, exactly the same way. You will actually feel, in your heart, you will feel the same feelings once you've released the other feelings that are stopping or preventing that. And it's the feelings that are stopping or preventing that that actually interfere a lot with our channeling. So for a lot of mediums, they can channel quite well for somebody else, right? Because they think the other person has more value than themselves, but when they come to channel for themselves, can't channel at all. Why is that? Because they, they, they can't receive the information clearly through whatever filters they have. So in this like, next week we'll be talking about more about the emotions and we can ask more questions about the processing of those emotions. If we can look at it from the point of view of how it influences the mediumship today, you can see how that's influencing your mediumship, Angela? Yeah, so the important thing is to see how it influences us in how... So somebody starts... We, our hand starts writing these words that we start looking at and go, no, 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 that doesn't feel right to me. Like, and... And that's the point. You see, what's the point in listening to another person is if everything the other person says feels right to you. <laughs> right. You're just talking to yourself in the end, really, aren't you, in a way. It, it, when you have a dialogue with another person, and particularly with a person who's going to be in a better condition than yourself in love, you're going to have lots of things confronted in you that you are not going to agree with. So a good sign of a good channeling is how much of this do I actually agree with? No, you've had that experience recently, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, so a person who is a quite a cheap, clear channeler in the end will get to the point where they can write things about themselves that they, that they don't even agree with. And yet those things they're writing will be the opinions of the spirit, whether the spirit's in a terrible condition and the opinions are really bad, or whether the spirit's in a really, really good condition and the opinion's really good, of the spirit, the opinions of the spirit will come through in your writing. In the end, that's where you want to be if you want to do mediumship. You want to get to this point where every single thing you channel is exactly what the spirit is saying to you without any inflection of your own. Even if what the spirit's saying to you is very nasty, I hate your guts, you're a terrible person, you've done, this, you know what I mean? They, and they're saying those things, you're okay about channeling it, yeah. right? Because that's the emotion of the spirit. If we want accuracy in mediumship, what we want is to actually be writing the exact words that the, media, that the spirit is saying without any of our own emotions affecting it. That's what we want in the end. Would you agree with that? 
if we're going to be really clear mediums, that's what we really need to do. Now, to do that, we have to own all of our emotions. You don't have to be at one with God to do that, by the way. All you need to do is own all of your own emotions. So I'm writing away, writing away, and they say some nice things about me. I don't even notice it. I'm just writing away. When I stop and read it, I read the, where they say nice things and then I cry. Right? And the reason why I don't notice it the first time because I'm not even thinking about All I'm doing is accurately channeling exactly what they're saying to me. That's our goal in the end. And then I might be talking to a first fear spirit in the middle of the hills, right? So I'm running away, running away, and oh boy, this person's saying some really rough, rough things, right? But I don't even notice it. They're just writing, you know, they're effing and swearing at me and whatever else, and, and I'm writing, 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 and I finish it and I read it and go, whoa, <laughs> that spirit's pretty angry. <laughs> you know, wonder where he is at the moment, right? And then we can interact with these spirits and assist the ones who are in a lower condition because we can feel that they're in a lower condition because we've accurately channeled what they wanted to say, given them a voice, accurately channeled what they wanted to say. So that's really the goal in the end. Your problem is you're okay with hearing all these terrible things about yourself, some of which are some, sometimes accurate because you know there's things within yourself that have been done. But the other part is when you hear some nice things about yourself, no, 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 that can't be me. There must be someone else they're talking about, right? And block all of that, basically. And you very much change those words to suit yourself then. And you'll notice as you're writing, when, you know when you've just sped up here, you can see your writing's totally different there. When you sped up for that sentence, when it sort of happened without you controlling it, you were now in the state of channeling from them, right? But as soon as you started thinking about it, you started going, what, back into this editing, editing, you were editing in your mind, no, no, that doesn't sound right, that doesn't, you know, and you can feel the difference, yes, okay. right? So if you can feel the difference of that, stop doing that and just allow it all to flow. Don't even bother reading it, just allow it to flow, right? Yeah. And then, at the end, read through it. Yeah. And whatever it triggers inside of you, deal with emotionally. If you need to cry, have a good cry. Yeah. 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 Does that make sense? Yeah. Good eye. Thanks, girls. Thank Th you. Thanks for your help. <laughs> we've just got to keep track of the time today because we've got to be out by four o'clock. So, um, well, we've got to pack up at four. We've got to be out by five. That's right. Okay. So, um, I've just got to keep an eye on the time as we go. Um, can everyone see the importance of actually allowing whatever to come through even if you have an emotional reaction to it and owning your own emotions? Like that's a really important part of mediumship and it's also a very important part of healing. And we haven't been saying much about healing but the principles of healing are identical. If you get in the way of what the spirit is trying to do through you then you are actually now putting your own emotions into the person when you're healing. Does that make sense? If that person is open, that person will begin feeling your emotions rather than having the healing energy from the spirit with them. So it's very, very important in both instances to be, be totally open no matter whether it feels like it's the wrong thing. Right? Now, of course, you need to be very sensitive to the spirits who are doing that. Because if, you're, if the emotion of the spirit is, let's say you're a healer and you've got someone laid out in front of you, you're a female here, you've got a male laid out in front of you, you've got a spirit with you who's quite dark, right? And the spirit's with you who's quite dark is saying, punch him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> right, obviously I don't mean do that. Does that make sense? Don't do that. If the, spirit's, if the spirit with you is saying, you know, touch him there and you know morally that's not the right thing to do, then don't do that. Right? This is where your sensitivity to the emotional condition of the spirits around you is so important. And what we're trying to do with this in all of these exercises is to stop you from thinking, as long as I develop my mediumship, I'll be okay. No, what will happen is as long as you develop your soul, you'll be okay. As long as you develop emotionally inside of yourself, you'll be okay. Does that make sense? If you allow these emotions inside of you to be more and more sensitive and more and more in harmony with God's love and release the emotions inside of you that are m more insensitive and less harmonious with God's love, what happens is you will automatically become a better medium or a better healer. 
automatically. Nina? Um, my. Try this one. Um, when I've been sort of tuning and channeling, I get pictures and feelings. Yep. Where, and, and then it sort of comes, it's not just words. Okay, so if you get pictures and feelings, then describe those pictures and describe the feelings. The reason why it's not words for that in that case often will be that the spirits themselves are having difficulty using words that you will allow them to use to write. And so what they'll do instead is present you with pictures so that, so that you will get the, get the idea of it differently. So just allow yourself to, to still write it all down and then ask for the corrections. Okay. Right? And this is something I get physical sensations in my body. Yeah, well. you may do that as well. And particularly if you're a healer, if you're a person who's used to healing, you will actually get physical sensations in your own body of what you know, you need to do to help the person. So you may scan over the person's body and then feel a terrible pain in your, in your stomach and, you, and, you, and if you're really sensitive, you start tuning in to a part of your, you know, where, where it really is. You might be on the right side or left side, right at the back in the kidneys or in the front, might be at the ovaries or, you know, and you'll know straight away and you'll start getting intuition from your guys. It's the ovary area or this, and you can actually say, and then, then if you're sensitive, the guide will be able to tell you even the emotions and where they were created from and what the instance was that created those particular emotions if you're sensitive enough to what your guide's impressing upon you. And this is where, where what makes a good healer is a person who's again detuning from themselves to an extent but still staying in tune with their emotions but allowing the person to work through them. And obviously if my emotions are that I don't want to harm a man or a woman then whatever I'm doing with healing, I won't harm a man or a woman. But if I, my emotions is I'm a man who's a healing and I have some anger issues towards women, then I could actually harm the woman that comes to me to be healed if I'm, if I'm not careful and I'm not owning my own emotions. And this is where it gets down to being really honest with yourself. In your case, what you need to do is allow yourself to write down these pictures and words and eventually what will happen is you'll feel a spirit take over your hand, if you like, and start guiding the writing of it. So at the moment, for a lot of you, you're just starting your mediumship or you're just starting these gifts, right? These gifts are all developable, but you need to start trusting what you're given at this point because that's the way they feel is the best way to work through you in order to open up this gift inside of you. Do you follow me? Yeah. So trust it in pictures and, and still write down what you're seeing in pictures and everything. And if you allow that to freely flow, you'll find at times you'll feel this taking over sensation. That's the sensation you felt, Angela, in that one sentence. You know, that was all written in almost a different handwriting, right? And you will notice this after time, you will notice actually that the spirits who come to you and write to you will actually sometimes write in totally different handwriting even than you have because you have gotten out of the way so much that they can now say what they want to say. Spirits love automatic writing for one primary reason and that is if you can do it properly it's one of the best ways for them to express themselves. It also takes the least amount of energy for them to perform than most other forms of mediumship. So pictures and feelings projected from spirit take more energy? They take more energy. Yep, to, for them to do that, but some people on earth, a lot of people on earth are more geared in their mind towards pictures than they are towards words, right? And so for those people, obviously spirit, a spirit will find it easier to give you a picture okay. than to write the words, and that's the situation you're in. If you want to develop the, issue, the, mediumship, the mediumship ability that allows you to write the words, then you will need to be a lot more freer in your mind and, and you'll start to be able to be open to th think in words as well as pictures. Does that make sense? And yeah. you'll, you'll feel the difference in you when it happens. Yeah, well, one channeling that I was doing, I, I felt myself come in and it really broke the connection and it yeah. was really good to feel that yeah. distinction so strongly. Yeah. How many of you are now noticing when you've been f experimenting with this, you can feel yourself, no, nah, it just feels like me now. Have you been noticing that for some of Yep, so that's good. And the key is to allow yourself to notice that and say, all right, what was my emotion that I felt just before I stepped in? 
Because every time, just at the moment you step in, there's an emotion that caused you to step in. And you need to allow yourself to work through that emotion. Does that make sense? So let's say just before you stepped in, they said a nice thing about you, in Angela's case. And she, you know, as soon as they started saying nice things about Angela, she stepped in. So she knows, oh, I don't like people saying nice things about me. Why is that? You can, you know, you can write that down as an issue. And then we can start looking at the emotions behind why that's the case. Or it might be you know, you st somebody started talking about sexual matters and all of a sudden you stepped in. Oh, okay. You know, I've got an issue with talking about sexual matters, so and hearing the truth about sexual matters. So write that down. There's an issue. You might be talking about men, and you stepped in. So there's something there going on about men. You know that you need to step in. You know they might have started saying something about mum, and all of a sudden you step in. So you know straight away I've got some issues with mum that I'm wanting to avoid here. Let myself get into those issues and emotions. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank yep. you. Okay. Can you just very briefly say something about spirits that are speaking in different languages and writing in your left hand or your right hand? Is that um, the reason why sometimes writing in your left hand or right hand works, so if I'm left-handed, I write with my right hand, is that I have less, emotion, less, less intellectual control over what my hand is doing. And so sometimes a spirit prefers, uh, you know, obviously, if you've got less intellectual control of what you're doing, that means the spirit can have more control over what you're doing. The way they connect is through your silver cord and into your mind, and they control your hand through your brain mechanisms. And so, so if, if, you're, if you've got less control over that mo motor process, they can have more control over it. So sometimes that's what works. So sometimes in terms of mediumship development classes, people recommend, you know, writing in the opposite hand than you actually would normally write in. With regard to different languages, well obviously it's very, very difficult uh, to be a clear medium unless you are really clear to write in a different language altogether. If the spirit is a ancestor that doesn't speak English, I'm meaning? Uh, well, if, it, if you have the language set inside of yourself, you are totally able to, to channel that person in any language. So, so, for instance, if you, have a, you know German and your parents, know, parents who have passed know German and they come to speak with you in German, you'll be able to channel in German. So there's, you, the more languages you know inside of your brain, the more they can use those, those brain triggers to actually write their words. So an, an ancestor that can't speak English would have difficulty channeling to a person who can't speak their language? Um, it depends on their uh, s spirit state. If their spirit state is in the first sphere, it'll take them a little time probably to learn the language. It might take them a few days or a week or something to learn the language first, and then they could come back and write to you in English. Does that make sense? Um, if, uh, if they're a celestial spirit, they'll instantly know how to write to you in any language. If they're a spirit in the first sphere, they might take a few days to a week to, to learn the language and then, and then they come back to you and write in that language. So, does that make sense? When I say, obviously it's a bit different than when we're here. You remember that when you're in the spirit world, you're not impaired by your brain's activity. Most of us, because of the emotional injuries that we carry, have very, very low brain function in our physical body. And, as a, as a, and when I say low brain function, I'm not, being, uh, uh, I'm not attacking you. What I'm saying is that there's a well-known fact that we use less than 10% of our brain, right? And the reason why is because of the emotional impairment on our physical body. Now, as that emotional impairment raises, and, and releases, you will have more and more and more and more brain function. Eventually, you'll get to a point when you're at one with God that all of your brain is being used, right? Now, in between those two times, you can, you know, when you're in the first fear state and, and, or second fear state and your brain is, is still in the 10% bracket, if you like, what's happening is every language you lear, use, uh, learn is difficult to learn. You know, there's a lot of different emotional reasons why we have difficulty learning and, and, and understanding things because we're not actually connecting to our soul. Whereas in the spirit world, they're using the spirit body's mind. The spirit body's mind has a lot faster mechanisms going on inside of it than the material body's mind. And so therefore, and, and there's not, you could say, the material body has not actually got a mind, it's just got a brain. The mind is actually behind it in the spirit body, but there's connections between the spirit body and the material body's brain that need to be established for everything to flow into the brain. So, so the, the issue we face is 
when we're in the spirit world, we don't have that extra translation going on. And so the process of learning is a lot faster. When we're here on earth, and we, we usually have this extra translation going on of what's going on in the brain, how our brain is actually being affected by our emotions. And so therefore we find it a lot more difficult to do things like learn languages. So in the spirit world, even in the first fear, you can learn languages very rapidly. And uh, there's cases in the pageant messages, for those that have read it, where a spirit comes to them and then Ned feels them go away for a second or two and then they come back and said, oh, I just had to learn your language first, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and they come back and then they start writing, you know? And then there's other times where their spirits have come to them, celestial spirits, and they say, I am here, and they go, uh, uh, I can't remember who my, my, my name was um, <laughs> when I was on earth, right? So they go away. And then they access those emotions and then they come back and say, oh, my name was Elizabeth, and, and off they go. <laughs> and, and he asks the question, why did you forget your name? Oh, well, we just don't use it, and I haven't used it for 2,000 years. You know, so, well, if you don't use your name for 2,000 years and it wasn't important to you anymore, do you think you'd remember it? So, in the spirit world, uh, we have emotional signature, like personality signature. All of you have a unique identity and a unique personality signature and we know each other by that signature rather than by the name. So, so um, the name is just like a label that we've used here on Earth uh, that is really loses its importance and by the time you hit the celestial spheres you might have had 10 or 15 names and none of them really mean much because in the sense that they're not who that you are you've got a specific emotional signature that is who you are. And after a while, you, you, you know, you, you can attract people by that signature. So, so you learn how to do that. And all of you will learn how to do that in the future. <laughs> all right, and maybe it's time to just have a short break, if we can, for 15 minutes. Is that all right? If we have a short break rather than a longer one that we've been having. And uh, so if we can come back by 2.45 sharp. <laughs> No worries. <laughs>